So what actually happens when you numb out, right? Whatever that is, whether that's drugs, alcohol, which is like the most common, right? Some people do it with eating. Uh, a lot of people will do it with procrastination, just like scrolling, whatever the fuck it is to distract themselves, numb out, and kind of ultimately disassociate from your life because that's actually what you're doing is you're disconnecting um, from your your purpose, from your objectives, from what you should be doing in that moment. Now, I'm gonna give you two things that are, one of them is a reason that why you wouldn't wanna do that, and one of them a reason is why you would wanna do that, okay? So one of those reasons is why you wouldn't wanna do it, okay? So why wouldn't you wanna disassociate from yourself and whatnot? Well, here's exactly why, okay? This is it, for, all the reasons there are to, to not do drugs, not disassociate, not numb out, this is the number one reason why, okay? Is because if you are not vibrating at an authentic vibration, resonance, right? Which, bro, you can say that, you know, reality is cause and effect all day long, which it is. It's in the Kabbalion. It's one of the seven principles, but... Um, it, it's more to it than that. You, it, this is what people mean when they say alignment, when you're, you're aligned with your highest self, when you're in tune, shout out big Sean, I'm in tune, I'm in tune, I'm in tune. It's a great song where you're actually in alignment with your most authentic expression of yourself. That is a higher vibration than gratitude. Okay. Go look it up. So what happens when you disassociate and numb yourself out from that is you start living a false path and it makes it even easier to get goal hijacked, like Ty Lopez would say. Say whatever the fuck you want to say about Ty Lopez. That dude is fucking smart. I don't give a shit what anybody says, bro. You don't fuck, you can't fuck with the guy that reads a book a day and just like learns from all the best people in the world. Like that doesn't even make logical sense. So he would call that, you know, goal hijacking and saying that, you what do you call it? He said like the the frontier, you know, in the on the on the basically before you hit the law of diminishing returns. Okay. Now let's sum it up. So what I'm saying is you don't want to start vibrating, bro. Call it vibrating. Call it taking action. Call it being out of alignment. However you want to look at it, it really is honestly genuinely fine. I mean that's totally up to you. But just my interpretation of it is. You don't want to be vibrating in an inauthentic way. Um, you know, Owen Cook actually has a great saying, which I actually thought this for a long time because I'm an athlete, which is if you're not like in alignment, like with yourself, that by forcing action, you will actually create more problems than you solve, which I do find to be true. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a place for you know, the, 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 the discipline muscle that is just like, I don't give a fuck how you feel. Just get the shit done. That's very real too. That's extremely real. Okay. So what you really don't want to do though, is start just vibrating at a completely inauthentic, like not even yourself kind of a thing. So, uh, vibration. So really what, are, so that's, that's why you wouldn't want to do it. Now, why would you want to disassociate from yourself uh, at all? Why would you want to do that? Well, it's the same reason that ketamine therapy works, right? This is why doctors are get, which is hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Cause like my, my first notion of like what ketamine was like seeing people like in K holes at like after party raves, like it's like, <laughs> they're giving that shit out. Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, but the reason that you would want to disassociate from yourself is really when you're processing trauma. Because what happens when you go to process trauma is if you can't naturally create that distance between the stimuli and response to where, you know, you can go back and revisit, you know, whatever traumatic experience it was, um, you need to be able to see it clearly. Okay, you need to actually be able to see it from not a, not a third person, but more so like your highest self's point of view. You know, the non-reactive form of yourself. Now, I would obviously say it, that that's that's a way to live. That's a 24-hour-a-day thing. You don't want to 
just be yanked around by every other emotional response that you have. That's a horrible way to live. It's a very short-term way of being. You don't want to do that. You want to think long-term, long-term, right? And so when you can disassociate from yourself, and people call that meditation. I don't know, man. I've always been an active, me I've always been a flow state kind of guy. I've never been a fucking sit on a yoga mat and, you know, just try to just shut my mind off. That's not... What does that do? I mean, other than like the actual like, okay, yes, you can control your mind and like make it shut the fuck up if you want. Other than that, I don't really know what you're doing with that. That doesn't really make much sense to me. But um, flow state is very real and optimizing your brain function is very real. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't want to get dependent on anything. The more things you're dependent on, the more vulnerable you are and just the all around worse off you are. Um, now there's certain things that like, you know, people take that way too far with, with like, you know, they call food an addiction which for sure to a degree it can be, but you, know, you really just want to be at center at peace, you know, if angry, that anger is channeled to where, you know, you can create that space between stimuli and response within yourself at all times. And therefore you're making the longest term decisions in the moment when they count, because we have a mat, like knowing things and doing things. It's not even categorically the same. And that sounds so obvious to hear, but as a society, like as a, you know, just in your everyday life to, you know, nine out of 10 people, it's like, they don't even understand like how absolutely different knowing and doing knowing is actually kind of worthless. If you're not a good decision maker, all it's going to do is just make you hate yourself more because you're like, fuck, I knew the right thing to do and I didn't do the right thing. Why did not I do the right thing? All your shitty decision maker because you didn't create the, the space between the stimuli and response. Fuck, not good. So, you know, knowing is okay. I, I, I really wish, like, dude, my, you know, we, we live in a very academic society. Both of my parents came, my, my mom, my stepdad came from, you know, an academic, they, they both worked in universities, very academic people. And it's just like, bro, when you get in the real world, you realize like knowing things is literally worthless. It's literally worthless. So uh, I would extreme, I would highly encourage you guys to develop that skill of uh, developing the space between stimuli and response so that you can make the right decisions in the moment when they count towards your long-term goals, your long-term decisions and commitments to yourself. I'm gonna leave you with that. Peace.